Uh, hello and uh, good afternoon to our uh, alumni engagement program series. We are yet another uh, completing uh, a year today. So uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Natasha Tungare for the same. I wish we, uh, I think we would be uh, uh, doing a session with her today. And uh, uh, the talk is on FIT uh, Physio uh, Initiative. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Our very own Razia ma'am uh, will be introducing our, our today's speaker. Over to you, ma'am. Very well. Good afternoon to one and all. Thank you, Nurashna. Well, it's pleasure that today I would like to introduce Natasha. But to tell you that all our alumni, our all students have excelled in their own field, whatever they are doing. And it's really proud that they are doing good. Natasha, if I remember Natasha, Natasha always a shant girl, right? But yes, she has always determined and she has excelled in her academic and she was always determined what she wanted and she was a hard worker. She completed her graduation from Sanchetti, of course, from the Sanchetti Physiotherapy College from two, in 2018. That means she was our student from 2014 to 2018. And then she went to pursue her master in neurosciences, master in physiotherapy in neurosciences from KJ Somaya College of Physiotherapy. And of course, there also she excel in her master. And today she is working with Workhard Hospital as a neurophysiotherapist. Natasha had always a keen interest in the fitness. And if I'm not forgetting, Natasha does the lots of videos on yoga and she puts on the social media also. And that is a topic which is very close to her heart. And today she's going to speak about the fitness and fitness in the physiotherapist, right? So over to you, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, I would really like to express my gratitude to Sanjeeti College, my very own college from Pune, that uh, you all gave, gave me an opportunity to engage with the students. I mean, there was a time in uh, 2000, from 2014 to 2018 when I was a part of this and I still feel like being a part of uh, this institute through our alumni program. So uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for this opportunity. I would like to begin my talk uh, with the title Fit Physio Initiative. So my very obvious question to everyone would be, to our audience specifically, would be that who all of you work out? And I think the very obvious answer again would be ke, okay, time nahi milta ya fir, um, patience hote hai aur padhai hoti hai and we tend to, you know, forget to take care of our body. So today I would like to speak about the same thing that why and how workout not just workout but a physical activity and by physical activity I don't mean that treating patients or you know walking from one place to another is not just a physical activity when you do it at a particular time frame when you give when you devote your time to a particular physical activity that is what we call as fitness that is what gets included in physical activity so to start with why do you all think that physiotherapists need to be fit? So uh, before I tell you about this, I would like to talk about my own journey of physical fitness. I would like to share that with you. So what happened was during my 12th standard, during my 12th grade, I got diagnosed, not diagnosed as such, but I had developed uh, symptoms of PCO. And that time my gynecologist told me that you in future, you have to maintain your weight. You have to keep yourself uh, physically active, could be exercise, karo, take care of your diet. I was bombarded with the multiple instructions. So that was the time when I slowly began, you know, just simple movements, simple walking around. Uh, to, uh, kuch admission liya nahi tha physiotherapy in May during the 12th standard and I wasn't aware that what is fit principle or what is um, what kind of intensity do we need to put in while working out and that is the starting point of my own physical fitness journey 
I stepped into our college. I stepped into Sanjay Di College, and the first session we had regarding physical fitness was during our first year, and that developed my actual interest in keeping ourselves fit. So our seniors, I remember our uh, fourth year seniors and our interns during that time in two thousand fourteen used to take this physical fitness session for us. And um, initially, it used to be that, "Hey, why do we need to do this exercise? Why do we need to do all this? Why do we need to stress our body? It's not must motion. It's a hot weather. It's a hot weather. But working out during that moment used to make us very fresh." you know especially when these physical fitness session used to be morning at 8 to 9 or 9 to 10 it used to make our entire day really really jolly and amazing so that is how i began that time i realized that okay this is how we do the exercise not just walking or not just simple arm or leg movements but there is a particular way to do exercise that was in the first year then during second year we got introduced by our very own razia ma'am about the uh, fit principle and now there is addition to it it is fit vp principle so it is going to be uh, frequency of the exercise what kind of intensity you put in the type of exercise you do the type of workout you do and how much duration that is the time you give to the, this exercise so started applying those things into my daily physical activities so my daily workout some or the other uh, push ups or squats so i started applying these principles to that then later on eventually the same happened during the third year and fourth year as well and during the internship when we our postings were in neuro department we realized how much force do we physios require to stabilize simple knee of the patient so uh, especially this is for those who are working right now or uh, those who are currently treating the patients the interns the mpts of our college this is for you all that how much force do you all require to stabilize these patients the patients can be heavy the patients can be you cannot really determine the weight of the patient right so you don't really know that how much amount of force you will have to put in so your strength has to be of equal or more amount to stabilize him or her otherwise you don't want that your patient to fall so that is very important and that is the time i actually realized that yes your strength really really matters when it comes to uh stabilizing the patient when it comes to building that amount of strength into the patients so that was during the internship similarly 2019 passed by and 2020 came i don't know if 2020 is supposed to be called as very happening year for everyone because that is when the covid times came and we began during our masters we began our covid duties and during the covid duties how much those 5 hours in the pp used to be very hectic i mean apni zyada kuch physical activity ho nahi rahi hai but simply being inside that pp used to be so suffocating used to be so exhausting and after removal of pp literally our entire energy used to feel so down so there you are there that is the time where your immunity and your endurance matters and this endurance and immunity can be built up if you physios stay fit and that and that was the moment when i realized that yes itne saal se jo workout kar rahe hai ya itne saal se jo fitness maintain kar rahe hai that has got to something that has led me to something and this is how my entire journey was and later on i still continue to do the workout and some or the other yoga or everyday workout so i used to have these particular days monday if i do arm workout then tuesday i will do legs workout wednesday i will do abdominal workout so basically your days have to be there means particularly devoting certain amount of time to work out is very important whether you are doing zumba or yoga but giving that amount of time and not just simply taking out some 15 20 minutes and putting in so coming back to the question why do we physios need to be fit so mainly to stabilize the patient the heavy weighted patients to give exercise to this population the obese patients the to build up this endurance and strength amongst us physios so that we can apply those in for our patients as well 
then fourthly the patients develop confidence in you so i remember one incident which had happened um, when during my hostel life when i was in pune and um, during our uh, for final year and internship times so this had happened during the final year if i precisely remember so what happened was um, my posting i don't remember exactly where i was posted but the patient was quite hefty okay and the patient weight itself was around maybe 82 or 92 and i wanted to make that patient ambulate i took the walker i went to the relative of the patient opened the walker and both of us were trying to make the patient stand and the patient the first question he asked me the relative of the patient not the patient the relative of the patient the first question he asked me was ki aap pakka inko khada kar payenge na so and that was the time i kind of suppressed my confidence that why is in the patient able to have that uh, trust on me that i'll be able to make you stand so when you yourself are fit the patient the relative they do develop a confidence in you and you need to educate them if the, how to do the work or how to get the work done and that can happen only if you yourself are confident enough and they and that is how they can develop the confidence in you and last but not the least you when you perform certain kind of exercises when you perform a particular workout you get a bit better idea that how your client will be able to perform it so if i am prescribing 10 squats to a patient of acl injury first i need to do squats at that particular angle and at that particular uh, weight or whatever you are putting for the resistance you yourself can do that and that is how you will realize if your patient will be able to do it or not the amount of strength that is required the amount of force that is required you yourself will be able to tell it properly before prescribing that particular exercise to the patient so that is the reason we physios need to do the exercises and we physios need to be fit so yeah i already talked about the journey of my fitness and also in the youtube comment section i would like to know about the journey of your fitness also and also if you all work out or do any kind of activity what activity you do so i would like to know about uh, you people as well and also any kind of doubts if you all have regarding this uh, fitness okay let's talk about some researches the people who have proved uh, that why physiotherapists require to exercise what ill effects happen if physiotherapists don't do exercises also the incidences of injuries which happen in physiotherapists if there is no proper amount of fitness so yes this was one nice study i'm going to talk about only four recent studies there are literally millions of studies which are done from last 10 years and people have actually proven that why physiotherapy students why the therapists themselves should keep their fitness level on a higher level so this was a 10 year longitudinal study so what had happened i'll just try to make it simple for uh, the ug students that throughout the 10 years uh, the these physiotherapy students were tracked and their fitness parameters were measured and they found out i had the results of the study they found out that the endurance of physiotherapist is there but as in when over the end of the 10 years their strength is reduced so and especially in women their strength is reduced so you uh, you can search this study this is very recent one in july 2020 itself you can find this study on google scholar okay this is another study which uh, is which was taken which took place in croatia that work related musculoskeletal injuries among the physiotherapists and physiotherapy students so here uh, what kind of work related musculoskeletal disorders happen like physiotherapists are much prone to have carpal tunnel syndrome while uh, making the patient do exercises or while stabilizing certain joints of the patient they also have repetitive stress injuries as well especially when they are put certain amount of force while doing the mobilization they can get these injuries so these two are found to be very high in physiotherapists as well as physiotherapy students more in physiotherapists because uh, the workload is more in their that particular population 
so this was another study i'm not really going into the depth of every study because we have ug students as well and if you all still have any doubts you can definitely approach now this study was regarding uh, health related physical fitness amongst physiotherapists and this study has also found out that physiotherapists activity levels are less so you can find in the conclusion that the study has reported reduced level of health related physical fitness amongst physiotherapists so you um, you know can you can you all imagine that how many studies i mean these are just the studies which i have found so there are multiple studies and it is not that we are not aware of uh, about it we are definitely aware that the uh self awareness about physiotherapist and fitness inside in the physiotherapist needs to be developed even more let's go to the next study so this was this investigation was also a kind of observational study okay now this one was cardio respiratory related fitness and uh, this is just a minor abstract of the study this was a cross session study again and they have also found out that to achieve a good level of cardio respiratory fitness among the physiotherapists they should themselves engage in physical activities so um, you know the stress on stress which is put on the physical activity is really a lot and we physios need to follow that we really need to follow that irrespective of our age i mean you, we cannot really expect that the young physio should exercise more and the older or the senior ones can do a seated or sedentary job no uh, being physiotherapist you know the plus point of being a physiotherapist is we don't really have a sedentary job uh, even if we are academicians even if we are clinicians we do have to go to hospital rounds we do have to uh, you know go and take exercises of the patient some of them who are doing home visits can uh, actually have to go to the places of the patients so we are much into dynamic activity so that is really a plus point but ultimately if we don't take time out for our own physical fitness these all physical activities which we are doing as a part of our job also goes into way so we really need to take time out for our own activities the very important question that does it stop here the answer is no the it doesn't really stop only on the exercises i mean if you consider fitness if i do the exercises if i do all the workout but if my nutrition is not proper if my if i continuously take stress about uh, what the work is going to happen or what meetings are going to be there my stress levels are high my mental health is not sound then whatever workout also you are doing that is not going to really help you so adequate amount of nutrition and diet has to be there secondly your water intake should be good the reason i have put the water intake point is because i myself do not consume much of water while i am working matlab dhyan mein hi nahi aata ki itna pani peena hai ya every uh, patient ke baad pani peete rehna hai because nahi dhyan mein aata ye so that is the reason i have put this point as well that uh, this applies to me also me as well as you all we have to take care of our nutrition and water intake very much in very much seriously thirdly having a work life balance work life balance is very important because um, if you put your entire time into working 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 doing visits doing this doing that you don't really get enough amount to give to yourself so taking some time out having certain amount of rest periods and having certain amount of breaks is very important if you feel like taking a leave a day off for yourself it it is it is pretty much natural to feel that way so you can do that i mean considering your work and uh, if your work is getting taken care of then you are really allowed to take certain amount of rest periods then uh, last but not the least that stress levels and mental health taking care of your mental health is very important so along with the physical activity everything we always when while prescribing to the patient we always talk about the holistic approach now holistic approach doesn't just apply to them but to us as well along with our work along with our uh, diet and physical activity you need to take care of your mental health as well so if you meditate meditation is one of the things you can do there are multiple things you can uh, 
there there are multiple possibilities which you can put into to take care of your mental health like um, doing doing some journaling taking care of your hobby being in touch with your hobby you know simply just going around for a walk the walk listening to a music so it will take care of your physical activity as well as your mental health so all of these things are very very important and if you all have any ideas what you all do to take care about yourself along with the physical activities because see what happens is we say when we talk about fitness fitness the meaning of fitness isn't just uh, isn't just only physical activity or exercise so these all things also matter to take care of your immunity so i would like to end here and thank you so much it was just a, a very small talk so if you all have any doubts i actually wanted it to be very much interactive session so that's why if you all have any doubts please put in the comment section in youtube and you are any time approachable see uh, let me tell you one thing that uh, we physios need to be fit this this statement is not really um, new statement to us we all are aware that we need to take care of our fitness but implementing it and executing it is something which adds on and when you implement uh, when you implement your own fitness when you take time out for yourself you don't just feel good and but that reflects on your work life as well so and this is a tried and tested method by me so you all can definitely do that and always approach in case of any doubts thank you so much over to you ma'am yes thank you dr natasha thank you for this wonderful uh, insight in uh, how to stay fit as a part of profession we need to be uh, fit like you said uh, rightly but uh, so we i mean i have a question like you said that we should have a work life balance so how to strike mm-hmm. that work life balance is something everyone is struggling to so can you have some uh, can we have some tips where we can you know strike that balance sure 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 so what i had done this was i would actually like to take this as a activity for all of you uh, take a pencil and a paper and you can make four quadrants okay so your first quadrant will include the things which are important and necessary so there is a difference between things which are important and there is difference between things which are necessary so your first quadrant will includes all the activities which are important as well as necessary your second quadrant will include the things which are important but not necessary so they can be delayed okay so that is the second quadrant the third quadrant would be that the things which are necessary but not that important so these two quadrants which you see the second and the third quadrant those are something which can be delayed so the first quadrant activities you are supposed to do on the priority basis the second and the third quadrants you can do it later as well and the fourth quadrant which are not at all important and not necessary to wo to karne ki zarurat hi nahi hai so that is how you can have a work life balance so all your work activities all your priority activities you can divide into all these four quadrants and i think it will be much simple to you know take care about yourself also as well as your work activities also okay. this is what i had tried once and it really worked <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's a good tip so i think everyone can do this uh, for any of the activities or Definitely. any anywhere in your life you can use this tip so thank Definitely. you for this tip and uh, secondly is um, see i mean everyone uh, striking a, a work life balance is something which we need to uh, think of uh, it first but there's also something uh, exercises wherein we we do not really concentrate on the exercise part very much because we are so engrossed in our day to day activities that getting that time is something very difficult so how would you suggest that we can concentrate on or we can you know make some time for us for exercises right. right so making a time table is a very boring task but an important task so making a time table can be one option but for the people who are not able to really take time out means those who have many a times night duties or shift duties and uh, who cannot really put one single scheduled time to you know uh, do the exercises or put time in 
do exercises so what you all can do is from your place of stay to your place of work if you can walk along or you can simply you know uh, go for a particular walk or even if walk is not possible but at least instead of taking a vehicle if for a certain amount of distance you can walk that also can be one good physical activity secondly if your work is sedentary usually physios works are, are not sedentary but if at all in sitting you can do some of the other exercises then that can also be one of the good option to take also resistance exercises uh, taking files from one place to another is, i won't really count that as exercise but uh, you can do do these small small things to keep yourself physically active so yes so oh, yeah so that is important like every day at least uh, maybe 30 to 40 minutes of uh, daily yeah, exercise 30 to 40 minutes is yeah can so be is done is something that can be done yeah so we need to take that time out and uh, since we were talking about uh, this uh, 30 to 40 minutes can be a combination of uh, strength and um, uh, yeah, cardio uh, as well fitness as cardio right? aerobic as well as strength or if at all you feel that you want to divide your work the way i mentioned that one day can be arms day so on that arms day you can have a few of strength activities as well as some of endurance activities for your arms so aerobic training now push ups will be a strength activity but when you are simply taking arm and doing certain amount of movements or simple arm zumba arm zumba is amazing aerobic activity so you can have that or if you want to divide your schedule as for strength and cardio then you can do it that way as well so monday if you are doing strength activities so full body strength activities would be on monday tuesday would be full activities full body arm work uh, full body cardio workout can be on tuesday okay uh, yeah so uh, yeah right so also uh, with this uh, regular physical activity i feel uh, there should be uh, i mean exercise is one of the methods wherein we can be a little stress free but can you suggest something which can be a little more uh, you know meditate can be a part of meditation but also can relieve stress because work stress is something which it really gets difficult for us mm-hmm. to you know because we have to follow the deadlines we in uh, in today's mm-hmm. world so okay. how do you suggest we can cope up with this then i would suggest that uh, meditation is one aspect but many a times if we are uh, loaded with multiple things or as you mentioned that deadlines are there then even if you are meditating you are trying to meditate you have those all dates in front of you that ye time pe ye karna yeah, stress is constantly there ki it is constantly there <laughs> it is constantly there so you can have that that is the place where your hobbies actually take um, a part where your hobbies can actually you know color therapy is something really nice you know we used to uh, during childhood the way we used to take colors and color those coloring books so that is also one really good option but if you find that the patience activities or the you know sitting at one place activities are is something you are not really able to do then you can simply take some time out 10 minutes or 15 minutes go around go for a walk talk to a friend or simply uh, you know engage yourself into listening to music just calming music and i'm not saying that the lyrical songs but a simple very calming uh, the sounds of the what you call rains and the oceans that also helps a lot i mean you know being a pediatric physiotherapist now i'm not talking as a alumni but as a pediatric physio i have seen these things so uh, you know take making really drastic changes in pediatric kids so the kids who have adhd and who have autism spectrum disorder when you play especially the kids with hyperactivity those who are not able to sit at one place and those whose brains are continuously active they are not even matlab meditation bhi kuch nahi kar sakte aise bachcho ke liye so you can actually have a background um, music very calming music on dim the lights of take some small lamp tiny lamp and put around and just sit on and vestibular works here very well so you can sit on the swing if you have the swing at your home or simply go to a garden and sit on the swing how much ever childish it looks but you know trying out these things like now right now irrespective of the deadlines and irrespective of the work these things really calm me down 
so you know the actually there can be another session on this entire thing that what all things around us we can use to calm ourselves down and to take care of our own uh, stress levels yeah yeah so sure, we can have that so uh, with this uh, i would like to thank dr nadasha for taking out uh, her valuable time and uh, you know speaking about us about how we should be fit so fitness is something which is very important uh, as not for you for yourself but also for others like she rightly said that we need to have confidence of our patients in our, in us if you are not fit enough so how are we going to develop that confidence in our patients or colleagues everywhere so she rightly mentioned that so thank you uh, dr natasha for your time and your valuable guidance thank you so much thank you, yes. thank you so much for giving me the opportunity yes, sure sure so we we would uh, like to um i mean conclude our session and like i said so we completed a year of our alumni engagement program series so that today's was the 12th uh, session and i hope that was with a bang for all the all of you so thank you everyone for joining yes. bye bye thank you thank you so much bye bye